Ever since I reached my late 50s, I've noticed ageism for the first time. It's not something I really thought a great deal of until probably the last five years or so. But it's definitely something that I've spotted recently, particularly. I mean, my backstory is that I retired at 44. Um, I was very fortunate to build a small business into a saleable asset. Uh, it was a business that I launched when I was 30. So uh, in the recruitment industry, uh, a small employment agency based in Northern England, but it did develop into a saleable asset. It was something that I could cash in. And when I was 44, I did just that. And uh, for the next four years, I didn't do anything. I was fully retired. I spent a lot of time with my son, who at the time of me retiring would be about seven. And I also uh, did a lot of uh, leisure activities, all the usual things that you'd expect, playing golf very badly. Uh, I also did a lot of traveling with my wife and son. I would say probably 10 or 12 weeks a year, we were traveling in various parts of the world. Uh, a mixture of things really, cruise ships, normal holidays. We also visited Portugal quite a bit. So uh, it was a, a life of leisure for a while. But uh, as my 40s progressed, um, I started feeling a distinct sense of lacking purpose and uh, a distinct sense of not using my knowledge or skills that I'd built up over about 25 years in a particularly productive way. So when I was 50, I decided that I would return to work, not full time, but just a couple of days a week um, as a business consultant, business advisor, that type of thing, coaching leaders of small businesses, particularly businesses in the recruitment industry. Now, when I was 50, the age gap between me and my target audience was relatively small. We're talking maybe five to 10 years tops. And my recent business experience and business success was um, a lot more recent, in all honesty. I mean, I'd been retired at that point six years. So I'd been running a recruitment business six years ago. So it was fairly straightforward to use social media, things like LinkedIn, to develop a small consulting practice. Plus I did a little bit of angel investing, uh, but I found it fairly straightforward. But 10 years later, the age gap between me and my target audience was much wider. The owners of the recruitment companies were still relatively young, around about 40 but I was now pushing 60, a 20 year age gap. And I increasingly felt like they regarded me as a bit of a dinosaur because my industry experience was in the, the 1980s and the 1990s and the early part of the 21st century. And I guess, they must have been thinking, at least I think this is what they were thinking, that things had changed. And how I went about building my recruitment business wasn't relevant anymore. So the interest in what I did became less and less and less. And despite being very active on platforms like LinkedIn, I increasingly found that I had to put a lot more effort in to my content and promoting my personal brand to get the same number of inquiries that, uh, that I used to get quite easily 10 years earlier. So that was my experience of ageism. Now there's a side of me that thinks that I don't blame them because when I was about 40, I guess 35 to 40 when I was hiring 
growing my business. I must have hired hundreds of people in that time. I, I won't lie, I was, I was ageist. Uh, there weren't very many older people in my business. I think the only one was Ken, the accountant, who would have been in his 50s. And everybody else, well, they were well, well under 40. I mean, an element of that is that at the time, and I must admit I still think it a little bit, that the recruitment sector is a bit of a young person's game. Um, that was one of the reasons. But I also thought at the time that younger people were just a bit easier to manage. Um, they were sponges. They were people that would soak up the knowledge that you gave them and they seemed keen to get on. They were prepared to work hard uh, and all that sort of stuff. And I thought that anybody over 40, and that's what I considered old at the time, anybody over 40 didn't fit into that category. They were a bit kind of set in their ways. I couldn't teach them anything. And that's what I thought. So uh, yeah, I was ageist, I won't, I won't lie. But we all become that older person. Um, and I eventually did become that older person. I'm now 63. So, am I set in my ways? Well, I don't think so. I think that uh, I'm as open-minded as I've ever been. I've got a growth mindset. I, I'm always keen to learn new things. And when it, and when it comes to business, I, I'm always learning. I'm, I'm deeply immersed in, in the current trends. I mean, for example, my approach to this particular YouTube channel is I've, I've used all the, the tools that are available, ChatGPT, for example, uh, the various analysis tools that you can get, vidIQ, things like that. So I'm very open-minded. I consider myself to be that. Um, I mean, I'm far from being a dinosaur, far from it. In fact, I would go so far as to say that I've met quite a few people who are around about 40, and I think they're more close-minded and, and more dinosaur-like than I am. However, um, it, is what, it is what it is. Now, I don't know what it's like for anybody who's working. I was having a chat yesterday with a fellow YouTuber. Uh, I'll leave a link to his uh, channel in the description below, and he specializes in the, in the subject of finding jobs for the over 55s, and he's found it really difficult to find a job. So if you're somebody who's looking for a job, then yeah, I guess it could be a bit of a nightmare, the ageism. But things need to change. I mean, I get it that a lot of jobs are probably going to be um, replaced by automation and AI and things like that. But the flip side of that is that a lot of jobs are not going to be replaced by those things. They're really not. I mean, people are still going to be needed. Um, and that is going to be a challenge for anybody who's employing people because the simple fact is the demographics, uh, demographics I should say, are not in the favour of the employers. Younger people, it's getting less and less. There is an ageing population. People are getting older. There are more older people. Not just that, people are having to stay at work a lot longer. I'm very fortunate in that I did manage to retire at 42 and I get that. I mean, I'm very lucky. I worked very, very hard. I seized my opportunities and I created my own look to some extent. And I know a lot of people don't have that luxury. They're going to have to stay at work longer. But if they're going to find it increasingly harder and harder to get a job, then where's it all going to end? Less people to hire more older people wanting to stay in work, but the employer's not hiring them. Where's it all going to end? That's the question I have to ask. So I think it's time that the employers started waking up to the fact that they're gonna have to work out some way of hiring these older people, and they're gonna have to figure out how they can integrate those people into maybe what is a younger workforce. They're not past it. I mean, you're definitely not past it at 50. Um, you're not even past it at 60, in my opinion. I mean, are you ever past it? I don't, I don't think so, if, I, if I'm really honest. But the employers are gonna have to figure it out. And the only thing I would say to the older generation is that 
they may be going to have to have a little bit of a think about how they portray themselves. Um, you know, if you are job hunting, don't come across as close-minded. Embrace all the new technologies to help you. Demonstrate to any potential employer that you are current, you are still there. You know, you're part of the digital generation. You're not part of the, of the generation that, uh, you know, came before the internet and before my mobile phones and scared of those things. You've got to demonstrate that you're with it and prepared to embrace those things. That's just a little kind of sidebar. So yeah, that, that's it really. I mean, that's my view on the, on the topic. I just wanted to put that question out there. I mean, if you're over 50, for example, do you think you're past it? Do you think you've still got a lot to offer? Are you suffering uh, ageism in the marketplace? Hello? I mean, yeah. Are you experiencing it? What are your thoughts? How are you finding it in, out there? Are you finding it very, very hard to get a job? If you're self-employed or you've got some kind of services or consulting business or something like that, how are you finding that? Are you finding it uh, harder than it used to be when you were a little bit younger? Well, the reason I ask that question is because one of the things I tell a lot of people who are around about 40, or I advise a lot of people who are around about 40, I don't tell them, I advise them, is that they should think about creating some form of consulting business around their knowledge. Um, and that advice is all very well, but if people are going to start seeing you as a bit of an old fart, an old dinosaur, who isn't up to date with life, 10 years after you've launched your consulting business, what are you going to do? Anyway, those are just uh, my rants on the subject. The reason I'm doing this video today is that uh, it's Friday. Uh, I've just dropped my 94-year-old uncle off at Tesco supermarket to do his Friday shop. Uh, if you've seen any of the videos in the past, he's, he's, he's featured in one of them. I'll leave a link below in the description. He's an absolute uh, legend. Um, I'm going to head back to get him shortly. I'm just taking a walk on the Knavesmire, which is where the race course is, beautiful part of the world here in York. And I just thought it was a good opportunity to use my walk to uh, put out some content on that topic. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave your comments below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the subject uh, and I'll see you in the next video.